I'd like to try to just demystify compression a bit for anybody who doesn't know exactly what the different parameters of a compressor are doing. Uh, admittedly, I was using compressors for a long time without really knowing what they were supposed to be doing or what I was supposed to be doing with them. I think a lot of people get stuck twiddling knobs and guessing with compression rather than really understanding what their goals are and then how to achieve them. If you're not sure what to do with a compressor, I highly recommend starting with this very simple Pro Tools stock compressor. This is actually an incredibly flexible and clear, easy to use compressor. And looking at this interface clarified a lot of things for me as far as what the different parameters of compression were. Before we get too far into this, what is a compressor? What does a compressor do? I think a lot of people use a compressor to make things louder, but fundamentally, that's the opposite of what it does. A compressor makes things quieter. That's just a fact. And as a result, because things are quieter, you can turn them up more. Now they're louder. Um, compression itself doesn't make things louder. Makeup gain makes things louder. So what we're trying to achieve with a compressor ultimately is what a compressor does is it takes the loudest bits of a signal and it just turns down the volume knob. What you are deciding as you tweak that compressor is how much it gets turned down, for how long, and how quickly that knob gets turned down. Let's go back to our compressor. Let's run a vocal through this. These are all the stock settings. Cool. Probably the most crucial part of the compressor is going to be the threshold. How do we determine that something is too loud and it needs to be turned down? Well, the loudest parts of our signal are going to cross the threshold. That's this big orange knob here. And we can set the threshold to determine what material we want to be affected by the compressor. You see this bouncing dot on this graph, and that's Sam's voice rising and falling in volume. The compressor's not going to be active until that dot hits this orange line. Orange knob, orange line. If I turn that threshold way up, we have no compression. But if I turn it down, Anytime that bouncing ball is passing the orange line, we're pushing the signal down. We're turning down that volume knob. How much do we turn down the volume knob? That is decided by the ratio knob. You can see as I turn up the ratio, that line flattens out. That's because this ratio is saying three to one for every three dB, the signal goes above the threshold. I'm going to knock it down to one, uh, or I'm going to let one dB through. If I were to raise this to 10 to one, then for every 10 dB that goes over the threshold, I'm still only going to let 1 dB through. So that's really clamping down on the signal. If I keep this relatively low, you'll see that while the compressor is affecting the vocal almost constantly, it's actually doing less reduction overall because it's not clamping down as hard when the signal crosses the threshold. And we can see how much the compressor is working on the gain reduction meter. That's the amount of signal that's being reduced 
while the compressor is acting. So watch this meter. So it's working a lot, but we're only hitting a maximum of negative three decibels of compression. What we can also do is raise the ratio, let's say around 10 to one, and we can raise the threshold. You can see on the meter that we still hit negative three dB, but only on that one home because that was the only syllable that was loud enough to cross the threshold now. But the compressor really clamped down on it and it reduced it the same amount as when we had the 1.5 to one ratio at a much lower threshold. So with a lower ratio, you can have a more active compressor, or with a higher ratio, you can have a more responsive compressor that is acting less often and still achieve about the same amount of maximum gain reduction. What else do we have here? I think I mentioned your compressor is turning down that volume knob as you cross the threshold, but we need to tell the compressor how quickly to turn down the volume and how quickly to turn it back up. So that's where your attack and release come in. If I lower this attack to the minimum, the compressor is really working because as soon as the audio crosses that threshold, the compressor clamps down and none of that initial transient is going to get through before the compressor acts. If I lengthen the attack, we're actually going to let through the beginning of each syllable before the compressor acts, and the compressor is going to act a little more slowly. We're talking milliseconds, but it's really going to affect how the track breathes and the envelope of the sound. Then once the compressor is clamped down, we're going to tell it when to let go with the release. See, with a four second release, a longer release, this, my, my bouncing ball is going to cross the threshold and it's just going to take its time getting back to the original gain level. In other words, watch the gain reduction meter. It's going to continue to reduce gain longer before making it back to zero here. Remember, I didn't change the ratio or the threshold. That's just from attack, uh, changing the attack and the release. If I speed up the release, say five milliseconds, uh, which is as low as this goes, it's going to instantly let go and get out of the way as soon as the audio goes back down below the threshold. <laughs> just like that, we have no gain reduction. The compressor is letting go so fast that you can't see it acting. My bouncing ball is actually spending a lot of time above the threshold but you're not seeing as much gain reduction because the compressor is letting go 
instantly, almost instantly. Now, it is compressing. You're just not seeing it on the meter because it's letting, so, letting go so quickly. Now, we've reduced the volume of this track pretty significantly. Uh, if we wanted to compress it this much, we would say, oh, well, now, now the vocal's compressed, but it's way too quiet. So, in order to get back to where we started in terms of level, remember, this is what it's like bypassed. We're going to need to add some makeup gain. So, let's see. For the most part, you just want to use your ears and make sure that the overall level of the track is about the same bypassed as with the compressor active. The idea here is not to crank the gain and get more level for your track. That's what the fader is for. So now we have a vocal that is climbing up to this threshold, and when it reaches the threshold, suddenly it gets compressed but that's kind of abrupt. What if we could smooth out the action of the compressor a bit so that instead of suddenly compressing when it hits this threshold, there's a little bit of a transition period. That's what the knee is for. Not every compressor is going to have a knee option. Let's say, for example, if you're using a plug-in emulation of a vintage hardware compressor, that compressor has its own knee characteristic. In most cases, a hardware compressor isn't going to have such an abrupt knee. What you can see when you start moving this knob upward is the graph is showing you that as we start to approach the threshold, now the compressor is going to compress, and it's going to compress at a lower ratio in this area than it is up here when we're past the threshold. Suddenly, we start leveling out. And the compression becomes more aggressive the further we exceed the threshold. So one thing that you could actually do is maybe turn up this ratio quite a bit and even raise the threshold. So the signal's never quite reaching the threshold but you're still getting compression from that soft knee. Check that out. We're never quite reaching the threshold, but we're still getting some, some gain reduction over here. the equivalent of like a very low ratio of compression and it's gradual so it's kind of dependent on the input material the more you put in the more it's going to compress not to a high degree because we're still i mean we're at a very low ratio of compression but you can see that compressor is working relatively often and that's how the knee affects the action of the compressor Let's say we had this on something like a drum or a drum kit. I can lower the attack and really control the sound and then the transients are getting squashed as soon as they cross the threshold. But if I want some more punch, I can actually lengthen the attack. Listen to the kick drum now. The longer I make that attack, the more of the drum transient is going to come through before the compression hits. So you're going to get a, a bigger smack and then a clamp down. And the shorter I make the release, the quicker it's going to return. 
Whereas if I lengthen the release on something that's percussive, it's just going to stay compressed and it's going to smear the punch of the drums. So with something like a long attack and a faster release, you can bring out the detail and something rhythmic or bring up some of the, the low level ghost notes and nuances in any kind of track. So I'm in the process right now of building and moving my studio here in my house and obviously working on some mix projects. So. Will Mix Wednesday might be taking a little hiatus for a few weeks. I'm not quite sure yet. Uh, I'm curious to hear if this stuff is helping you out, uh, what you want to know more about, if there's something that you want to learn. Please let me know in the comments. Uh, that'll really help me out in deciding if I'm going to continue to do this and what it's going to look like from here on out. Uh, I'd really like it to be kind of a conversation with other producers and artists. I'm not really expecting to provide value to those people who are already working mix engineers. If you're doing this professionally, I know those people already know or can figure out all the things that I'm talking about. But I'm really curious to know how this could be beneficial to you, what you're doing, and how you're able to use it in your work. So I hope that you'll stay in touch and I can provide something of value. Uh, until then, keep turning knobs, pushing buttons, and I'll catch you on the flip side.